Hi everyone and welcome to episode number one in our Pokemon VGC 2019 Ultra Series guides. We are here today in the Ultra Series. It has kicked into the third segment of the VGC 2019 season. We've been through the Sun Series, we've been into the Moon Series and now finally into this third segment and I cannot wait to get into things. And what better way for us to kick into this new format than with an introductory guide going over all of the new changes, what to expect from this format and all the new Pokemon that we have access to going into the Ultra Series. As always though, if you enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel because this is one of five subsequent guides that we've got coming out in the Ultra Series, so you don't miss any of them when they do drop. But all information about the other guides will be at the end of the video, so you'll know and get a good idea of when to expect them. And also remember, please leave your comments in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you all and any comments about the guides, things that you would like to see in future and just generally what your thoughts are into going into the Ultra Series are something that I'd love to hear from you all. So without further ado, let's get into it. There is a lot to cover in this one so we'll jump straight over into our guide. So just to give an overview of the Ultra Series, we know from the Moon Series and the Sun Series we have access to all of these powerful restricted Pokemon. The majority of them are going to be on your screen now. There are a few variations from the previous two formats that we've been in the 2019 season, but we'll get into those as we go through. As always though, there's no difference going into the Ultra Series. You are going to have access to at least two of these Pokemon to be in any one of your six Pokemon that you pick for your team. So two of these can be be put into your team no more than that though but you can have one although that does maybe put you at a little bit of a disadvantage going into matches so the differences are we've now got access to Primal Kyogre, Primal Groudon, Mega Rayquaza and Ultra Necrozma. Some little changes there in our restricted options but we'll get into like I say the details about them as we go through the guide to look at the new things that we have available to us they are going to be that red orb and blue orb. The blue orb is the item Item that allows Kyogre to Primal Revert and turn into Primal Kyogre. And then the Red Orb does the same for Groudon, making it turn into that Primal Groudon. We've got the Ultra Necrozmium Z that we've got access to, allowing Necrozma to Mega Evolve and become Ultra Necrozma. And then we have access to Dragon Ascent finally on Rayquaza, which allows it to Mega Evolve when it uses that move in game. So they are the new items that we've got in regards to our restricted. And we'll just touch on the Primal Weathers to begin with. So Primal Kyogre has access now to Primordial Sea. It's its new ability. When it Primal reverts, it loses Drizzle and has access to Primordial Sea. Now what Primordial Sea does, it is very similar to Rain, but it is not on a ticker. So to begin with, it doesn't last for five turns and then go away. How Primordial Sea acts is as long as Kyogre is on the field, Primordial Sea will stay active until another primal weather is switched in which overwrites it or until Kyogre is switched out or it faints so primordial sea will always stay active as long as primal Kyogre is on the field there are a few things that still affect it like cloud nine and airlock if there are pokemon on the field with those abilities the effects are nullified as long as those pokemon are active now there are some mechanics that we need to go into with primordial sea because there are some huge game changes going into this format now as as long as Primordial Sea is active on the field, all fire type moves will fail. So this is extremely good protection for things that are four times weak like your Ferrothorn, like your Cortana, they are super scared of those fire type moves. Those fire type moves will fail as long as Primordial Sea is on the field. You're still going to get the bonuses to water type attacks, you're still going to have all the same effects that Swift Swim takes from Drizzle, Dry Skin gets from Drizzle. All of those effects will stay the same, there are just a few differences, but that huge one with the fire type moves failing whenever Primordial Sea is activated, then that is a massive one. The other thing to note is as long as Primordial Sea, these Primal Weathers are active, then things like Drought, Drizzle, Hail and Sandstorm will all fail if attempted to be brought in from a Pokemon's ability or used as moves. The Primal Weather will always take presence 
accident and these moves will fail so you cannot overwrite a primal weather with a normal weather. Airlock and Cloud9 still take effect and they will nullify these primal weathers. This is Kyogre's Primordial Sea as I say we've just covered it briefly to give you guys an idea about it now we'll move on to Primal Groudon. There are a few changes to Primal Groudon now it does get access to fire typing so it is no longer just a ground type it is a ground and fire type we'll touch on that a little bit later on in the guide but to cover its new ability which is desolate land it works exactly the same way as primordial sea it is activated as soon as groudon hits the field and primal reverts desolate land will activate bringing harsh sunlight to the field now it still has the same effect as what sun will do with that drought ability it'll still have the same effect on chlorophyll users it's still has the added bonus to fire type attacks and will act exactly the same as what drought would but it will not go away it's again not on a ticker until another primal weather is switched in and overrides it until groudon switches out or until groudon faints and the added bonus about desolate land is whenever desolate land is active on the field all water type attacks will fail so it's the complete opposite to primordial sea that nullifies and doesn't allow fire type attacks to activate desolate land when it is on the field water type attacks cannot activate and for something that has a four times weakness to water type attacks it is just a phenomenal ability making primal groudon even stronger we've already touched on the effects of airlock and cloud nine and then being nullified by that and we'll get into this next primal weather which is going to be the third and final one which is going to be delta stream which is brought by mega rayquaza so as soon as mega rayquaza mega evolves it activates its delta stream ability which is a very unique variation of weather called mysterious air and when it's in effect it causes all moves that would be super effective against flying type pokemon instead to deal neutral damage so mega requaza is a flying dragon type it is hit super hard four times weak to ice type moves now that is neutralized and it is just hit normally so it only has a two times weakness to that ice type attack because it takes away the flying weakness not the dragon weakness now it's important to understand this it's the same with salamence it will not just neutralize the attack completely it will just neutralize it from that flying type of that pokemon so Rayquaza will be still hit super effective with an ice type attack but it will not be hit for four times weak it'll only be hit for two times weak because it takes that flying type weakness away now it is for all flying types on the field so if your opponent has salamence out at the same time and you're trying to hit it with an ice type attack if delta stream is activated if this mysterious air is on the field then it will support your opponent's pokemon as well so you need to keep that in mind with how you're playing things now if delta stream is activated it will overwrite the other two primal weathers in primordial sea or desolate land and what you've got to remember with rayquaza is it has access to that that airlock before mega evolves and gets delta stream so it can nullify the other primals weather already with that airlock ability then mega evolving overwriting that and then getting that support from those really super effective attacks that will be threatened by ice beams and so on and then override the primal weather completely and like those other two primal weathers delta stream is not on a ticker it will stay on the field for as long as rayquaza is on the field until either another primal weather primordial sea or desolate land is switched in on it or until rayquaza switches out or it faints so they are just briefly an explanation of the new primal weathers that we have access to now let's have a look at some other changes going into the ultra series and that is mega pokemon so for those those of you that don't know mega pokemon are a thing and now we have access to them going into the ultra series this is a big game changer because the, a lot of these pokemon can keep up and are just as powerful as the restricted pokemon that we have access to i've just highlighted a few of the stronger ones here that you're probably going to see a bit more of in this format but this is not all of the mega pokemon if you'd like to have a look at the whole list of mega pokemon i've put a link down in the description you can go and check those all out so you're just looking at things like Mega Salamence, Mega Manetric, Mega Gengar, Mega Kangaskhan, Mega Gyarados, Gardevoir, Swampert, Metagross, Mawile, Lawpunny, Sceptile and Garchomp are just a few to name here that we've got 
got now access to to make things even more complicated going into the Ultra series. So there are a few of the changes and I'm just going to outline now before we get into anything else a few common calls you'll probably be seeing going into the Ultra series when you start practicing and what I've done is put the team pastes and poker pastes in the description below for you to have access to a few of these new teams to go and get yourself started within the Ultra series. So I hope they're helpful. Some of these teams and as you can see we've got a Primal Kyogre team it is Primal Kyogre Mega Rayquaza and then you've got the Incineroar type of Finny, Stack Attack and Clefairy. You've got that Primal Groudon Xerneas team that's doing so well early format so there's a, a paste of that in the description below and then we've also got examples of an X-Ray build which is that Mega Rayquaza Xerneas and also an Ultra Necrozma build as well for you guys to try and just to help you get started within this format. Now some of the things that you're going to have to be aware of going into the Ultra series is weather support. Now we've outlined primarily what the changes are with the primal weather, the desolate land, primordial sea and the delta stream and these are so important. These are the things that really dictate the format. They dictated the format so heavily in 2016 because they have the ability to shut down so many options for your opponent. Like you can see with primordial sea, you can have as many steel types in there as you want because as long as your primordial sea is active, they cannot hit your steel types with those fire type attacks. And the same goes for if you've got desolate land active, no water type attacks are going to be able to fire it off from your opponent. So keeping the weather in your control is so important. So there are a few things that you can do within this format to really help you around having that weather control on your side. Pivot support is so important. You're gonna have things like Tapu Koko, Mega Minetric, Raichu, they're all your fast Volt Switch users that have access to that pivot support. Get out first and then get your weather back in to make sure you are keeping control of it. And then you're gonna have a bit of a slow one we've seen throughout the VGC 2019 format in Incineroar there with that turn and also lander as Therian as well has access to u turn as well and these are just a few options that you can look at to pick and make the most of within your team things to be aware of as well when you are playing against them the other option you're going to have to control weather for yourself and what your opponents are going to try and do is trapping you in and not allowing you to switch out and making sure that your pivot options are shut down and one of the new pokemon that we have available to us in the ultra series that's going to be be very popular is going to be Mega Gengar it does have the ability to trap you when it mega evolves as well as Gothitelle so these are two Pokemon that you can really take advantage of trap that Primal Ground on and get your Primal Kyogre onto the field overwrite the Desolate Land and just do away with it so easily. Options for you there as well with Mega Gengar to have Hidden Power Water, Mega Evolve in front of Primal Groudon, fire out a Hidden Power Water, switch in your Kyogre that same turn, get the Primordial Sea activated and then nuke the Groudon in front of you. It's a bit memey but it can work if you can maneuver yourself around the board well and protect that Gengar or the Gothitelle that is in there trapping your opponent and making it very difficult for them to gain any momentum. Then we're gonna have a look at further options for supporting the weather. You're gonna see options like skill swap that players will rely on. Now, skill swap swaps abilities between two Pokemon. Bronzong's a very common one for this because it's got that levitate ability, especially against such a big threat like Primal Groudon. It's gonna be utilizing Precipice Blades more than anything. Being able to protect your big restricted Pokemon by guaranteeing your weather up and then alleviating its weakness or just ability to be hit by any of those ground type attacks is really valuable. The other options you're gonna see are gonna be on Mega Gengar. It's one of the fastest Pokemon that we've got access to in this format. So being able to just have that quick skill swap to alleviate any switching from your opponent as well. If they decide to switch in a turn, you can alleviate that with a quick skill swap at the start of the turn and still fire off those water type attacks to get rid of Rhymel Groudon. You're gonna have things like Crusade Stack Attacker and also Tapalele all have access to Skill Swap as many more Pokemon and these are just a few examples as well as the Roleplay Pokemons. Now you've got Tornadus that has Roleplay. It normally and has been known to carry Rain Dance, but because Rain Dance doesn't really have much viability going into this new format you're going to look at other options here and I really think that Prankster Roleplay is a very nice option 
on the tornadoes, being able to either mimic the desolate land or the primordial sea or the delta stream and just get that active before the turn really begins because of its priority that it gets with the pranks that is invaluable. You're going to have things like Togdemaru as well that can support Kyogre through its lightning rod ability. It's quite quick in respect to most of the other restricted Pokemon as well so that role play is quite useful and then things like Meowstic, Greninja and Latias and obviously Mega Latias are other options there for the role player that you can utilize and what you've got to watch out for other players utilizing it as well. Now going into team building in this format there is a lot of differences from other formats so most teams will want to include specific options to perform optimally and you know if you're going to include those certain options you're going to be quite item locked at the end of it because you're going to have a primal or maybe two primals, so that's two items gone. You're gonna have a mega Pokemon, that's another item gone. You're gonna need to squeeze in a Z move somewhere and probably a terrain as well. So, you know, you're really locking your options going into this format because you need to make sure that you are having at least one of these things in your team for each category that we've got. And obviously speed control as well. So this limits what players have access to team-wise because if you're not using a primal weather or you're not using a mega evolution or a Z move or a terrain it does put you at a disadvantage to players that will be using that because they are the strongest options that we've got available to us in this format so access to additional mechanics makes building both easier and difficult at the same time and being able to really cross over roles within the above options alleviates your available slots so being able to have a mega Pokemon that does speed control and has intimidate like mega salamence really ticks a lot of boxes and it's only one pokemon and you're not spreading yourself so thin with the slots that you've got but just to make you aware as well that it does make information gathering when you're in game a lot easier because primarily primal kyoga you know what item it's got mega salamence you know what item it's got once you find out the z move there are very few items left team wise that your opponent has and getting that information is quite easy the item choices are very limited in this format and that's one thing that you should be aware of going into the ultra series so the item choices just going a bit more in depth here you've got the the blue orb the red orb the mega stones the z crystals and like i say there's the three item slots at the end that you've kind of got access to there so that's all the information that you'll need to gather most of the time in battles because most of the other things are really quite self-explanatory and like i say it does alleviate the need for now knockoff isn't as beneficial as as previous formats and also magic room becomes less viable as well and like I say it does make information gathering in game a lot easier. So hopefully that's useful just going over those for you guys um, especially when you're going into team building. The next thing that we're going to have a look at is speed tiers because this is so important going into the ultra series. Now one of the things that I did mention earlier is that Kyogre and Groudon need to be holding the, that blue and the red orb. There is no more scarfed Kyogre for the most part. If it's primal Kyogre you know it's not going to be scarfed obviously but because of that you could get a real good grasp of their speed tiers. You know they're not going to be faster than 156 and you're not they're not going to be slower than 85 so just making sure that you've got a benchmark above and a benchmark below to deal with those threats makes them so easy to deal with and really make and manipulate your speed control and things like that around it much easier than in previous formats whereas now you've got Scarf Kyogre is it Scarf Kyogre is it Z Kyogre it's really hard to guess what the potential Kyogre on the opposite side of the field is going to be doing and it sometimes will catch you out and you can get really punished for that but now going into the ultra series it's very straightforward primal kyogre has a certain speed it can hit a certain speed it will not go below and you can really work around that to the best of your ability so one of the things i wanted to do going into the next bit of this intro guide was speed tiers because i feel like it's very important for all of you players out there to, to have a basic understanding know where a lot of these pokemon fall speed tier wise so you can utilize them to the best of your ability and make sure that you are covering yourself as well as possible when you're building in your team so you've got that plus 130 speed bracket things like mega minetric mega low punny mega septile and pheromos have fallen into that bracket then you've got the 130s which is going to be the next one down you're going to be like tapu coco mewtwo crobat mega gengar aerodactyl and then your base 120s to 129s is going to be mega salamence ultra necrozma greninja naganadel and weaval fall into those slots then we'll go down again your base 10s to 119s which is going to be lugia mega Requaza, base 150 
15, then Mega Metagross, Raichu, Whimsicott, they all fall within this bracket. And obviously there are a lot more Pokemon within these brackets. I'm just giving you, to give you an example of what to expect and things that fall into them. Then you've got the base 100s to 109 bracket. You're gonna see things like Mega Kangaskhan, Palkia, Mega Gardevoir, Cartana, and Thunderous Therian form. And then going down, you're going to have the next speed bracket, which is your 90. is going to be one of the more popular brackets in this format with Primal Kyogre, Primal Groudon falling into this. And then things that are a little bit faster, but still falling within this bracket, Lunala, Xerneas, and Eveltal. Then below that, you've got the 80s to 89s, which is Tapu Fini, Zygarde, its complete form, Toxicroak, Cresselia, and Mega Gyarados. And then below that, we've got the 70s to 79s, which is going to be Duskman Necrozma, Dawnwings Necrozma, Things like Hitmontop, very good support in this format, Smeagol and the Serena, and then 60s to 69, you're getting a bit slow now, so the Gothitelle, Incineroar, Aegislash, Orangaroo, and Clefable, and then even slower than that, you're going to have things in the 50 to 59 bracket, things like Chansey, Alolan Muk, Hariyama, Mega Mowile, and Azumarill, and then everything kind of below that, looking at Amoongus, Stack Attacker, Clefairy, very good support, Bronzo and that Drampa that does have access to Cloud9. So I thought it was worth mentioning just for that. Now, some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to take advantage of when team building in this format, because of how linear it really is and how locked you are with certain options. You're not locked within options, but you are locked within certain things that you need to include in your team or you will be at a disadvantage, like I say, like a Primal, like a Mega, like a Z-Move. You need to have those options in your team. And they do take slots up on that six team layout that you've got. So things to support those are gonna be Tailwind. Speed control is so important within this format. Tailwind is gonna be very good, something that you can utilize and the Pokemon that can offer that are gonna be things like Tornadus, Salamence, Crobat, Lunala, and Yveltal, very good options to offer Tailwind support. You're gonna have Terrains as well. We all know about Terrains since the Tapu's got introduced in the Sun and Moon series. Having a Terrain can really benefit from the effects that they can help support your team with, things like Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, Tapu Fini, and Tapu Bulu. And then we can look at other options you're gonna need Intimidate somewhere along the line to help reduce the attack damage on things like Primal Groudon. It's gonna be a big threat in this format. Salamence, Minetric, Hitmontop, Incineroar, and Landorus Therian all have access to those. And another really important mechanic that you're gonna really want to try and squeeze in there if you can is redirection. Things like Amoongus with Rage Powder, Follow Me with Clefairy, Togekiss, Rage Powder again with that Volcarona, and then Smeagol sneaking in on the end there with that Follow Me that it has access to, or Rage Powder, but it's generally a good idea to go for the Follow me on that one. Fake out's gonna be something else that you wanna take advantage of going into this format and options that you've got there are gonna be things like Hitmontop. It's got access to Helping Hand, Wide Guard, Faint, a flurry of support options there. Incineroar, we all know about, the king of the VGC 19 series. And then Smeagol, Raichu, and Togedemaru, all things that will be very useful in this format and all have access to Fake Out as well. Trick Room's gonna be something else. It's gonna be the flip side of your Tailwind users and something that players are gonna jump on and take it full advantage of going into the Ultra Series. Things that can really benefit and set Trick Room up pretty easily because of their bulk and just general usability within this format are going to be things like Bronzong. I do expect Cresselia to make a big comeback in this format with its just ability to Trick Room skill swap, ally switch and lots of things that it can take advantage of going in and supporting those primal evolutions. You're going to have Stack Attacker as well, Duskman Necrozma and Dawnwings Necrozma that do have access to Mega Evolving into Ultra Necrozma as well as that Trick Room support that they can bring to a team. So beating the primals that's going to be primary target going into this series you're going to have things like tapu coco now that was once so scared of things like scarf kyoga running things like a sash or a salt fest just to get around it doesn't need to worry about that anymore because it naturally outspeeds kyoga it has access to its z move and with the electric terrain it's going to be able to get rid of kyoga pretty easily you've got to watch out for things like mega manetric togodomaru that carry that lightning rod ability but for the most part if you 
you can deal with them, Tapu Koko is going to have a great time against something like Primal Kyogre. Obviously as well, having no threat from the Scarfed variants, Cortana is going to have a great time against Primal Kyogre now, naturally outspeeding it, threatening it with those super effective grass attacks, and an Assault Vest on there can really help against any Intimidate support that your opponent's got to kind of lower the attack stat of Cortana to really miss out on that one hit kill with Leaf Blade, so you have to generally take some sort of water type attack in return, then you can get around that with an Assault Vest and deal with Kyogre pretty handily. Ludicolo is going to be something that deals with Primal Kyogre still as well as it does regular Kyogre. It has access to that Swift Swim ability as long as the Primordial Sea is on the field and active. That Swift Swim will be giving Ludicolo its double speed, its grass attack type attacks will be hitting for super effective damage and it resists all those water type attacks that Kyogre, Primal Kyogre can throw back at it. And another Pokemon just to tag on the end there is going to be Little Old Ferrothorn. It's so bulky, it just takes those water type attacks, even full power in rain, pretty comfortably. And if you are going down a Trick Room route with Kyogre, you have to be very careful for Ferrothorn because it will underspeed you and can hit you for very, very strong damage with those power whips. So that's Primal Kyogre. Primal Groudon, we're going to look at Mega Salamence is a great check to Primal Groudon. Now it does, like I said earlier in this guide, get access to that fire typing. It is now a ground fire type. It has desolate land ability, but it still has to be very careful about some of the opposing threats in this format. Now Salamence has access to Intimidate, it can neuter Groudon's physical attack. It resists fire with its dragon typing, and because it is a part flying, it does and is immune to the those ground attacks and precipice blades will constantly miss unlike other times. So yeah, Mega Salamence is a great answer to Primal Groudon. You can switch in on it and then threaten it with Hyper Voices, Double Edges, or anything that you've got access to on Salamence. A very good check for it in general. Set up Speed Control as well to support the rest of the team and Groudon's gonna have a really difficult time against that. Primal Kyogre is gonna be something that really Primal Groudon doesn't like sitting in front of, especially if it's not got its desert land ability activated and it is threatened by those four times weak water type attacks that Kyogre can threaten with especially when it's boosted with the primordial sea as well. Opposing Groudons, Primal Groudons are something that Primal Groudon has to be a little bit cautious of because now with that fire typing it does have a ground weakness so opposing Groudon will threaten it and special and physical variants can threaten it in both ways so if you're relying on um, Intimidate to help support against a potential physical Groudon, you've got to be careful not to get caught up by a special variant because Groudon does now have access to a, a lot higher special attack as well and players will tend to jump on that so that's something just to keep in mind and one thing I will just mention now is I might be skipping over a lot of details within these guides but one of the things I want to make you aware of that I'm doing separate guides for each of these Pokemon so I will be going a way more in depth with these this is just to give you an introduction and get you just the basics down before we go into to the other guides. Mega Rayquaza is going to be another Pokemon that really gives Primal Groudon a really difficult time. If you haven't got access to a rock type attacks to at least hit it for decent damage as long as that Delta Stream is active on the field, it's going to be taking resisted damage from those attacks and it has that ground immunity, it has that dragon type and to resist the fire type attacks and it also disrupts the weather with both its airlock ability and its delta stream ability just giving even Kyogre amazing support against this Pokemon so things that Groudon needs to have support around and to watch out for when it is in battle. Next on the list is going to be Mega Rayquaza. So what are the things that really check that? Hmm. Tapu Koko is definitely going to be one again. It does naturally add speed, has access to that Twinkle Tackle, so it doesn't really worry about the Delta Stream in this situation if it runs the Ferranium Z and can pick up an easy one-hit kill against Rayquaza. Rayquaza is going to struggle to damage Tapu Koko for good damage outside of generally something like extreme speed. So Tapu Koko is going to have a pretty easy time against it. Xerneas is going to be something else that really threatens Rayquaza Rayquaza pretty hard, especially if it's got that Geomancy boost up. Rayquaza is going to find it very difficult to deal with Xerneas, especially with support around it. Ultra Necrozma is something, again, that naturally outspeeds. Mega Rayquaza has access to Dragon type attacks and can hit it for super effective damage, so Rayquaza just needs to be mindful of that when it is facing down against it. And then Mega Salamence, the other dragon, is going to be quite common in this format, naturally outspeeding again, and can carry Dragon type attacks that will threaten it for very good damage not generally 
known to carry dragon type attacks but you can't make that assumption every time and just think you're going to be safe in front of a mega salamence when sometimes they might have a stray dragon pulse or drake or meteor hero there and that will really catch you out and do a lot of damage like i say and also the intimidate there will really hinder mega requires ability to perform like you want it moving on we've got Ultra Necrozma is the final one that we're going to look at. Again, that type of Coco going to be threatening that. Naturally, it speeds it by one speed point. Ultra Necrozma has that base 129 speed stat. Twinkle Tackle again going to be the Z move there that can nuke it, take it down before it can do anything. So you've got to be very careful against that. Again, Xerneas is going to be something that threatens it, especially with that part dragon typing that it has. When it does Ultra and Mega Evolve with the Geomancy boost up, you can't really do too much to the Xerneas. And and then things like Eveltal with its dark type in walls, most powerful attacks from Ultra Necrozma most of the time and hits back for super effective damage. And the same can be said for Incineroar as well. It can just sit in front of it and do all sorts of shenanigans and really make life very difficult for Ultra Necrozma, whether it go down a special or a physical route. So that wraps up the introduction to the Ultra series. I hope you guys have enjoyed it, but just to give you a brief idea of what to expect in this series for the Ultra series guides, you've got Got today's guide which is going to be the introduction guide and I've just basically went over the very basic information here I didn't go into very much depth about Pokemon specifics because I will be covering all of these in the subsequent guides that will be coming out this week so today we've got the introduction guide to the ultra series which we've already covered tomorrow's guide is going to be Primal Kyogre we're going to have Wednesday's guide which is Primal Groudon Thursday you can expect to see Mega Rayquaza guide and then Friday you're going to have Ultra Nerf Crossma, and that should give you everything that you need along Side our moon series guides and our sun series guides to give you as good a start going into this format as possible so i do hope you've enjoyed this one guys it's been a lot of fun covering it so far and i cannot wait to get into the other four guides as we get into this week so do let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are going into the ultra series i'd love to hear from you all about the ultra series and what you're expecting what you're most looking forward to and what teams and things you're looking forward to using in this series and like i mentioned earlier in this guide series i have put four sample teams down in the description for you guys to take away get you started within this series and start getting an idea of where you want to go and what teams you want to use going forward so i hope they're of some use to you i'd just like to say thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll be back with our kyogre guide tomorrow so until then guys take care of yourselves have a great day whatever you're up to and i will see you for the next one so until next time bye bye